what's up guys we're back with another tutorial today today we're going to show you how to do the 3d infinity loop effect it's kind of similar to the last tutorial we showed you where we do a, a parallax effect with the iphone essentially going to mirror what photos you take with the nishka n8000 which is a film camera you can do this with a film camera an iphone or a dslr but the process remains the same. So let me go ahead and show you how to take these photos. Just to show you real quick, the Nishka uses four separate lenses to take the same image from slightly off-centered angles. Um, you're gonna mirror this effect with your iPhone, but you're gonna take the same image four different times, slightly off-centered angles. So let me show you real quick. The first tip is that you wanna make sure your live photos are off. This just makes everything smoother in post-production. A second thing is that in terms of distancing yourself from your subject, you wanna make sure that this, your subject's no more than roughly let's say two meters away from your, your camera. This kind of maximizes the depth of field when you take your photos. If he's, for instance, any further away, you can't really tell the 3D in your photo. Um, so that's one thing to keep note. The second item is that when you take your photos, you wanna make sure to keep your camera level and on one plane. So when you take your photos, you don't wanna turn your camera at all when you take the photos. You wanna take one after the other, in a straight line, four photos at a time. And the final point is that you wanna make sure that your subject is as still as possible. The film camera does a really good job because it takes that photo at a single instant and it can capture motion. But when you do this with a different camera, you're taking four different photos. And so in order to maximize the 3D effect, you wanna make sure your subject is as still as possible. So let me go ahead and show you real quick. Uh, you'll take four photos. So one, two, three, four. Usually I take two or three sets just to be sure. One, two, three, four. And let's take one with ultra wide 0.5 real quick to give us even a different effect. So one, two, three, four. So once you have your images, you're gonna go ahead and send them to your laptop so we can edit in Photoshop. So that'll be the next step. So once you've taken your photos, you're gonna go ahead and export them to your laptop. Um, what I've done is gone ahead and just airdropped them to myself. And then you're gonna need a photo editing software. For this tutorial, I'm using Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. You can use any Photoshop, or alternatively, you can use any free um, editing software that allows for keyframe animation. So I've gone ahead and dragged them to my Photoshop here, and you'll see that they load up in four different photos. Um, select one of the endpoints, so either the first or last photo. I'm selecting the first photo as your starting point. And then you're gonna go ahead and click and drag your photos in order onto your first frame. So in total now, on your designated photo, you should have four layers of the different photos. Click through just to make sure they're in line. Um, at this point, you can also kind of slightly rotate them so that they're kind of all in the same stance. Cool. The last one you can tell it kind of rotated clockwise. We're going to rotate counterclockwise just to make sure that it's pretty much in the same plane. It doesn't be perfect, but um, it definitely helps in the final um, process. So the next step is that you go ahead and turn off the eyes for the other layers. And based off the base layer, you're going to go ahead and align them around a center point for which the GIF is going to revolve around. For this tutorial, I'm going to choose his head. Um, well, actually, let's do his hands instead. So on the first layer, lower the opacity, and then align the photo so that your center point is in focus. So for this instance, we're gonna make sure his hands are in focus here. Cool, you can tell that other things are out of focus, but just his hands are in focus, that's perfect. And then you do that for each corresponding layer. All right, almost there, perfect. And then the final layer. Cool. You can tell that this one kind of jumped a little bit, a little bit clockwise. So I'm actually going to fix that a little bit here. Perfect. It looks a little bit better. You can already tell. And on this final layer here, what you're going to do next is you're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. And once you've duplicated this layer, you're going to invert it. So command I or alternatively go to image adjustments, invert. Um, once you've had this image inverted, you're going to go ahead and lower the levels on it to make it as dark as possible. This just helps with the, the final image. You don't want it white, 
um, because it like kind of hurts your eyes as it like flashes. But if you keep it kind of somewhat darker, um, it definitely like isn't as like harsh in your eyes and actually makes a cool effect. Um, okay, so you have all five layers now. Um, the next step is you're going to go click create video tutorial, video timeline. And on the bottom left here, you're going to click uh, convert to frame animation to make keyframes. Cool. Um, next step is you're going to set your time delay for each one. Um, I go ahead and set 0 0.08 as my ideal time delay. Um, you can choose other things. Some people use 0 0.10, 0 0.12. Um, use whatever is, works best for you. Um, and then next, you're going to click um, duplicate these selected frames. And you're going to make five keyframes, one for each layer. Um, the final layer, because it's just like a jump back to the beginning, we'll set this as like a really, really low frame delay. Cool. The next step is you're going to deselect the eye for all the images except for layer zero. Um, and then for each keyframe, you're going to select the passage or the eye just for each layer. So number two, click the eye for layer one. Number three, the eye for layer two. Number four, the eye for layer three. And then likewise for the final one. And now press space just to see how it comes out. All right, we're looking pretty good. The next step is that you can kind of tell that when you edit and move these photos around, you'll have like blank spaces. You want to crop to make sure that's not visible in the final image. So crop just enough to where you don't see those. So you have a little bit left on that one. Perfect. There's actually a little bit on the bottom here still. Cool. Now when you press space, you have your, your image and this is how it's going to turn out. So the next step is you go ahead and press file export, um, save for web. You can actually save this as a video file straight from Photoshop, but for whatever reason, my Photoshop's really buggy. Um, so I just save it as a GIF straight from here. And then I usually set it to around 2000 pixels um, for Instagram. You don't really need super high quality. And then I just save to my desktop. The next step is you're going to actually need to, if you save it as a GIF like I do, you're going to need to convert this GIF now to an MP4 or a video file. Um, I use a free website called easygift.com, GIF to MP4. I'll link this in the uh, description. You can use this. So you choose a file, go to the GIF that you just exported, and you click Upload. Once you've done Upload, click Convert GIF to MP4. And then save this, and it'll save to your downloads. The next step is that you need to send send this to your iPhone. I go ahead and just airdrop it to my phone, um, or you can like send it as an attachment in an email. And then I'll go ahead and switch over to the phone next to show you what you need to do next. So the final step in uploading this to let's say Instagram is that you need to have your file at least three seconds long. The one that we just exported is only like left less than half a second long. So I actually use this app called Video Joiner. It's free in the App Store. Click it. And then let's make a new project here. Um, so you'll go ahead and import that file that you exported to yourself right here. Uh, and if, if you click play, you can tell it's really, really short. You go to the end here and click clone. Just keep clicking it until you get about four keyframes at the top. Perfect. And then click play. And you can tell it works really, really solid there. And then the final step is you can go ahead and export this as a photo and it'll export to your, your photos. Um, alternatively, you can also like add, if you keep cloning, you can actually add music as well um, as like a playover and that's also a cool effect. And so, yeah, go ahead and check it out. Um, really, really cool effect. Let me know if you have any questions and um, I'll see you in the next video.